With the recent passing of Satoru Iwata, Nintendo announced that Genyo Takeda and Shigeru Miyamoto would be taking his position for the interim time period. Now while everyone knows Shigeru Miyamoto and what he's done for Nintendo, not as many people know what Genyo Takeda has done. So let's take a look at Genyo Takeda's history with Nintendo and what exactly he's done for Nintendo. Born on March 7, 1949 in Osaka, Japan, Genyo Takeda originally joined Nintendo back in 1972 after responding to a newspaper ad. After spending some time in a branch of research and development, Takeda was moved up to general manager of another research and development team that was smaller, with only about 20 employees. The primary focus of this group was designing and creation of software and hardware for arcades. Takeda is responsible for the first video game ever created by Nintendo, an arcade game called EVR Race, which was a game in which up to six players could predict who would win in a horse race, similar to modern gambling. Takeda's group then focused on software and hardware with the Famicom, or the NES as it's known in North America. Under the leadership of Takeda, many classic NES titles were created, pro wrestling and ice hockey included. Takeda also played a major role in Punch-Out for the arcades, which was then ported as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out for the NES. Not straying from his technical roots, however, Takeda created one of the most important features of later NES cartridges, battery backup memory. The first game to use this feature is the classic Legend of Zelda, designed by Shigeru Miyamoto. Before the Legend of Zelda, games would use a password feature to document progress, but nothing was saved onto the actual cartridge. Takeda and his team created the battery backup which would supply a constant power source to the RAM chip that would save the game even when the console was turned off or the cartridge was removed. Another important creation of Takeda and his group was the analog stick. Before the Nintendo 64, games relied on the use of the D-pad, which had limited directional control in games. The Nintendo 64 was the first home console to offer the analog stick, which would allow for near 360 degree movement in games and has since become the standard for control in games. One can simply look to Super Mario 64 to see how big of an impact the analog stick created in gaming, as the DS version, which featured a D-pad, never felt as smooth as the original Nintendo 64 release that preceded it by 8 years. Takeda also impacted Nintendo's first foray into online gaming, by developing modem peripherals for the GameCube which were used in Fantasy Star for the console. Takeda was moved to Senior Managing Director of Nintendo in 2002. Perhaps Takeda's biggest impact in gaming was the Wii, which he was the lead developer for. Takeda was one of the bigger adversaries of simply beefing up the console and creating a graphics war, instead comparing the video game industry to the automobile industry, in which while there are fancy expensive race cars, there are also cheaper, more practical cars that could offer something different, and both of which have enough of a market to create for. The Nintendo Wii was arguably a success for Nintendo as well, being one of the most successful consoles for Nintendo. After 43 years with Nintendo, Takeda now sees himself at his biggest position he has ever had with Nintendo. While Iwata's principles and ideas will live on, it is now up to Miyamoto and Takeda to advance them and create their own spin on them. Takeda's lineage speaks for itself, and it will be an interesting upcoming period for Nintendo with having him at the helm.